So today I'm really excited to talk about Never Hike Alone, which is the fan-made Friday the 13th film that came out last year, I believe in September or October, um, somewhere along those lines. And I never got the chance to see it, and I always heard great things about it, and I knew the twist on who's in this movie at the end. But I didn't know if this movie was free or not or anything, and I would have gladly paid money for this, but, like, it just, it, it always, like, escaped me to watch this, and I really am ashamed to call myself a Friday the 13th fan to not watch this, because, um, first viewing this, this was incredibly awesome. Um, this is even better than, I'd say, a couple of the Friday the 13th sequels, the ones I despise, definitely, like... Um, Jason X or Jason Takes Manhattan, like those couple, like, and Jason Goes to Hell, I'd say is be this is better than that, even though Jason Goes to Hell, I like how it's different and unique in the franchise, but, but I definitely say it's above those, and probably part seven, a new, The New Blood, I, I think it's above that too, um, uh, because A New Blood is where it got really repetitive and it started to be more quote-unquote cynical for me in terms of like I didn't care as much about the characters except for the main character Tina um, so I'd say it's halfway along the lo those lines in the franchise like I'd say this is probably right dab in the middle because the first six I love like I love the first six Friday movies almost all equally um, so I'd say this one goes right past that the, the first six and that's not saying that this is bad in any way. It's just the first six are just so nostalgic for me. They're really amazing in a lot of ways. And this this movie, Never Hike Alone, is really the Friday the 13th movie we need. Um, because, of course, it's to, we're to a point where the rights are just scatter, scattered everywhere. And, and everybody, all the people involved are so scatterbrained and so selfish on whose rights does this movie really belong to or this franchise really belong to. So in the meantime, if we ever get another Friday film, I'm glad we got this one. Because, like I said, don't, don't think of this, even though it's called, even though it's a fan-made film, don't think of it as that. Because it, it really... It has legit things about it, like an actor in the franchise at the end of the movie. And the way it's shot, the camera this person is using, this crew is using, it looks like a movie camera. Like, this looks like pretty theatrical, honestly. And the the effects and the shots are incredible in, in this movie. There's a lot of great shots that rival the franchise in terms of like being this being made and put on YouTube as opposed to being released in theaters if it ever would be that it's incredible how there are so many shots in this movie and so many things about this movie that look so theatrical and feel so theatrical so I really think that this like I've, I of course wanted to just see this but like I feel like people might immediately shun this away because it's not gonna be part of the franchise it's not and they even said at the beginning this is not this is just kind of our thing that we want to do to support the fans, support everybody involved with the Friday franchise because they love it so much, the people who made this fan film. So I I really dug this. And right away I'm going to say, like starting the movie out, right away I'm saying going to say that the, the music in the movie is incredible. The score really, it, it harkens back to the old Friday movies, but it feels new in a way if that makes any sense like it it has the quality of like a classic friday film like i'd say the first seven um but it's a it's a current day film like 2017 i guess is when it's supposed to be set presumably i don't think it says in the movie when but i'm presuming it's 2017 but uh but the score in this just feels like that classic friday feel and then the movie starts with that amazing score, and then we get this character named Kyle McCloud. I think that's what his name was, McCloud. Um, he only said it, he only said his last name once, I believe. So if I said it wrong, forgive me. But I thought it was Kyle McCloud, but Kyle I know is his first name. And this Kyle guy is like doing a thing online where like he's taking like footage of this place he's searching in the woods. Um, and he doesn't know where he's headed to. And I like this character. And I like the fact that this is a Friday the 13th movie that is not... 
in any way like the other ones in a lot of ways where you've only got literally one main character. There are people who die in this movie, of course, but they're not campers. This guy is just hiking alone. Towards the end, you get some carnage. Um, just a tiny bit, but th this is basically just this guy and Jason fucking with him. And I, I really like that idea. That's a unique thing to do in this franchise instead of like... Every Friday the 13th movie, whether it's in a different location, it's usually the same plot, basically, even though they're all fun. Most of them are fun. But they... This one, I like the fact that it was just one character. It wasn't... It didn't follow the same ideas of the other films, where it's like, it's gotta be a group of people. A group of people get killed. This was interesting on its own right, without this character dying. Um, and literally just following this character around but it was so interesting and it's and and like I said it's better than a lot of the sequels that I mentioned like Jason X or Part 8 or the remake and the Kyle character I want to mention too this is another current character like the Friday remake that came out in 2009 but the thing I like about this character is that this character isn't a douchebag because in the Friday remake most of these characters in that remake, not all of them, most of them, were really douchey and really unlikable, and that's where horror movies led in a lot of ways to some types of franchises where they're like, okay, we've got to put these people in here and make them so unlikable just to have them killed. In this, it's not like that, and this this character is close to that timeline of those, of like the remake, where it's like, um, it's close to that time of release, so I like the fact that this character is a modern kid, but he's not like the kids in like, the remake where they're not most of them are un, just unlikable and so annoying this character was really likable you don't get to know much about him but that's totally fine it's just this character going off in the woods um, and it gets tense it really works and he for a while it's just him searching around and you see Jason maybe once in a while or just like a shadow of Jason or like a point of view shot and this Kyle guy goes into Camp Crystal Lake like he figures out where he's at and I love the fact his explanation when he's talking on the camera to everybody, like his, to his recording where he's saying that his brother told him a story about Jason, how he was like a myth, and how he was this guy out in the woods killing people, which does harken back to some of the Friday films like Part 6, where Jason was considered a legend, a myth. And I loved how they kept continuity like that really intact. Like, that's really cool. And whenever he goes into the camps... Uh, or into the cabins, there's a lot of things that connect to the other films, like just how, like they do things like, say there's a camp brochure, it looks just like how the sign looks for Camp Crystal Lake, like that's cool authenticity to it. Um, and stuff like that is really great in this movie. And of course, it can't last for long. He, he of course f realizes where he is, he encounters Jason. Um, he's up on the second story, where it looks like it's the location that Higgins Haven was from part three, but that's not technically the same place in Crystal Lake like the other ones are, so I don't know if that was just like an homage or it's saying it is, but um, he was on the second floor where like it's where it looks like hay bales will be pulled up like in part three in Higgins Haven, that location, but he keeps hearing the door knocking and then he goes up there and it's really tense and he goes stops the door and realizes he's on the second floor and like there's no like it's just a door that you open up just to lift stuff in and I like that but then it immediately does it to where it builds up so great to where Jason's behind him and throws him out the window and his camera flies out and then Jason and him fight and I love the fact that this character goes through so much shit but makes it through and that's great um this character is really strong a strong character like he like, he goes through all these unimaginable, like, things of being thrown out of second story of a cabin, and then Jason almost always gets him, almost, but he never does. He gets him so, like, every, like, he's always so close to getting Kyle, but then he jumps out of the way, or he dodges it. And I like how this character felt smarter than a lot of the characters in most of the Friday films, even though I love a lot of them, but I, I thought that was a cool addition to this. Um... And then, like, he does get injured. He doesn't die, but he does get injured in the leg, which 
that that moment grosses me out because anything in a horror movie where like you got a wound and somebody's like stitching it up or like taking stuff out of your wound like when he did that on his leg that that stuff gets me more than people getting killed in in horror like that grosses me out more it just that close up detail just grosses me out it's kind of like in Halloween 2 Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 where Laurie Strode is being examined in the hospital and they're pulling off like pieces of flesh or nails off of her like fingernails off of her like that stuff grosses me out more than like people dying in horror movies or getting killed but but yeah he has this wound now and he's gotta like survive and he even says on his camera like I've got literally just this wound and I can't do like I gotta go get help but I'm stuck here and I like that a lot that he had no he felt like he had no reason to survive but he does in a, and it's great how he does but I liked how he had he's up against Jason Voorhees hiding in this location where he Jason Voorhees is king at. Um, that's really cool. And then it then of course Jason finds him again, and then there's that ending fight. And I liked how Jason's mask gets knocked off, like in a lot of the movies. But in this one, it looks like like I don't know how to explain it. What Jason looks like? It's actually pretty scary how he looks underneath the mask in this movie. It reminds me of Part 8, where, Part 8 is so stupid, but at the end where it's the, they're down in underground in the underground sewer kind of thing, like the toxic waste comes down underground, and Jason becomes deformed more, like he becomes, he melts from like the toxic sewage. And that look looked kind of like that, but not in a stupid way like Part 8 did, but uh, and he has, like, part of his face is just gone, like, right in the middle, like, by his nose. And that looked creepy. That actually looked really effective. Like, that that surprised me again, that this can give off such effective, like, how like makeup effects. Too, the makeup's great in this movie. Like, the effect of Kyle, like, trying to get his legs stitched up. That is a really good, too. Um, and then, like... Like, that's just a cool scene where, like, his mask flies off because it's just a cool, different design look for Jason in this movie. Um, and then I love the fact that they have this fight and Jason... Like, they do a great trick shot where Jason comes up to Kyle. He stabs Kyle, Kyle's reaction. He got stabbed. And then it turns the camera around to where Jason has, has something in his neck, an axe. And then they both, it's a shot of, one shot of Jason falling back, and then one shot of Kyle falling back. And that was just a great cinematic, like, or thematic moment, like, of them both falling backwards. They both are, were the adversaries in this movie, and I think that's really cool. They really, they really made this Kyle character smart, and he fought back in a way that just really worked. And I like that it's a guy character who's the one in this movie, instead of, like, a girl, final girl. Even though I love my final girls in the franchise, but I thought that it was cool having a final guy. That's a, that was a cool thing too. That's usually always a final girl, usually. Um, besides like Clay, I guess. Um, but, but stop. But they both get, they both stab each other, and then you realize that Kyle had a book like right by the spot he got stabbed, so he barely got stabbed, but he did get stabbed in the stomach, just not strong. And that, that was just a cool little reveal, too, that, like, he was smart, and he just was lucky. And then uh, Kyle runs away, and then there's a shot of Jason. He he stands up. It's kind of like the Michael Myers thing, except for he doesn't tilt his head. And, J and Jason, like, goes up on the camera, his blank eyes, and then you see the moon, and it transitions to the moon. That is really, again, just really awesome cinematic shots in this movie like it's very cinematic for a fan-made movie and I'm not saying that as an insult at all to fan-made movies or to this movie it's just it's incredible what they did with this movie um and then he he kills Kyle which is at first I was like oh come on don't do that but then I thought only oh, do that in all the other films or it's a dream sequence and the person dies um, whether they live or not it depends but in this one Kyle lives because he goes like Jason pops out of the water um, like Jason and the original did, or how Mrs. Voorhees did in part three. And Kyle gets, gets like his head just smashed in. And then you see the back of his head and it just like breaks open. And then he wakes up from the dream and I'm like, good. I'm glad that they didn't kill off Kyle. Cause he, he was a strong, strong, like 
we're the adversary. I wish I didn't want him to go down that easily. That would have been bad. But uh, but then we get to the fan, like the the fan moments of this movie. We're like the fanboys freak out, and I freaked out too. Even though I knew going into it what what the ending was, like I knew who made an appearance, but um, but Kyle wakes up in an ambulance with this woman and this guy, and the guy's name is Axel, like Axel from Part Four, and then he has these hallucinations where he keeps thinking he's dying but then he wakes up uh, Kyle and he keeps seeing Jason in the ambulance so he's not there and then he imagines he's out in the middle of the woods with Jason getting him and then he wakes up again which is kind of cool and then this this moment is awesome even though I knew that knew that he was in this but then Tom Matthews appears as Tommy Jarvis um, He's an ambulance driver for some reason, which is a thing I don't get, but but still, that's totally a fine way to incorporate Tom Matthews into this movie. That was awesome. Just the guy, the last guy to play Tommy in part six, and he's awesome in part six. That's so great to see him come back for like under ten minutes of screen time, but still, that's awesome that you got this character back. Um, you got him just, like, I don't know if he would have done this for like a movie. Uh, Friday movie, maybe he would have, but or he probably would have if he was devoted to this fan made film to do this. So I really love that continuity, and that was a great surprise, even though I was ruined before because I was stupid and didn't see it right when it came out. Um, but but I was just like, oh snap! Even though I knew it, Tom Matthews, that's so awesome. I just thought that was so cool. And uh, then he has that line kind of where he says, Hey, asshole, remember me? To Jason. And, like, Jason's about to get Kyle and tie, tie down in the stretcher in the ambulance. And then Tommy drives away with uh, with Kyle in the back seat. And you just see a, a cool shot up in the air of Jason just walking towards that ambulance and speeding away. And he's never going to catch it. But you just watch him follow the ambulance. And the movie ends. And that just was such a great way to end it. That was such a cool way to... Again, this this is... And I haven't seen many Friday fan films, but this is definitely just in, an incredible fan film. Like, just the devotion they did to this fan base, the devotion they did to continuity, the devotion they did to bringing Tom Matthews... Maybe, they, maybe the people who made this knew Tom Matthews personally, but that's just awesome. And just having all this... All of this movie just felt like it could connect to the Friday films. And I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed that it gave such great continuity, even more so than a lot of the films. Which is saying something. Because, of course, it's like one of those franchises where it's never going to deal with continuity well, because a lot of people don't care um, who make these films. Uh, producers especially. But, and I'm not saying all producers don't, but like I noticed a lot of franchises like this or Halloween, the people who make these movies don't care if they have good continuity or if they connect to the other ones it's just it's a money gig and this this is awesome that this per, these people who made this movie it's on YouTube and it's for free and they are gonna make no profit from it that's again that's just so cool so cool that they just made this awesome fan-made movie that feels so much like a Friday film connects to it really well and and even though the franchise is very loose and literally with all these films almost but it just was really incredible and I really enjoyed it and for 53 minutes this did perfect like it was perfectly paced the character was the main character Kyle was great I like that he felt like a worthy adversary to Jason I like that Tom Matthews returned of course at the end and just the there were a couple kills and they were good but like I like that this was about one character fighting off against Jason so this was a great fan film and I really really dug it and I'm so glad I got to see it and like I said it's about halfway I think in terms if I if I put it ranking with the Friday films I'd say this is about halfway between like it's I like one through six better but I don't but the other ones after that I think this is better than those so oh and Freddy vs. Jason but god this was just so awesome and I really really am glad I finally saw it because Damn, I waited too long, and I'm kind of ashamed. So, yeah, really, really awesome.